welcome to our show for the love of animals. We're delighted that you, in, you've you joined us today. We're viewing here from Paducah, Kentucky, which is a hunting area. So all you hunters need to gather around. I'm Darlene Pickford. <laughs> and I'm Greg Bauer, and you just told them what the show was ah, about. Ah, <laughs> I gave a big hint, Greg. <laughs> and, hunting uh, cats. <laughs> there you go. Um, Anyway, we're so glad that uh, you joined us this afternoon. Our two little friends are not with us today. They're taking the afternoon off and sleeping at home. But, uh, and you our upcoming shows? Well, uh, we have two shows that we're, we'd like to do. Okay. One coming up with bees. Ooh. Now, a lot of people don't think a bee is an animal, but it sure is. Oh, yes, and, it's it is. and thus, an important one, too. Absolutely. And, and another one, uh, Real Men Love Cats. You came up with that title. That's and right, I because don't, real men sure. do love cats. <laughs> and ladies, too. Uh, you know, that's for sure. <laughs> but our guest this afternoon is no stranger to the viewers, uh, Sally Moore, who is from Paducah here and a local dog trainer. And uh, you may want to catch some of her previous shows that you'll find up on YouTube. Yes. And this afternoon, she's going to tell us about hunting dogs. Hunting dogs. And, and we're so happy you're spending time with us today, Sally. Oh, I'm just glad to be here to do it. S Sally, tell us about your fur family. We have three hunting dogs. We have three labs. Really? Yes. Three hunt. They all hunt? They all three hunt, yes. We duck and goose hunt. Okay. And they, so they all go with us seven years old, four year old, and a year and a half. Okay. And okay. they all duck hunt with us. And who do we have over there on the side with we us? We have Jam, my middle child. She's the four-year-old black female. Uh -huh. um, she hunts and she also competes in obedience. Oh, really? Yes. And of course, I use her uh, to do a demonstration, maybe for a person to show them a position or something training-wise. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So yeah, and she stays in the house, sleeps in our bedroom. She's part of the family, as they should be. Yes. Oh, wow. Hunting dog or not, they're, they're part of the family. Uh -huh. Okay, all right, so, so, so hunting dogs aren't necessarily outside. No, yeah, we'll, no. We'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. Okay, I'm not a hunter, so educate me. How do I use a dog to assist me in hunting? There's different breeds and there's different types of hunting. Okay. You know, retrievers are used for duck and goose and occasionally some pheasant work, but it's more structured. They wait, they go, when we send them, get the bird, bring it back to us. Okay. Whereas your pointing breeds, and, and your retrievers are your labs and your goldens and your Chesapeake Bay retrievers. And then you get into your pointing breeds with your setters and your pointers and your German shorthairs. They tend to go out in front and, mm -hmm. and point to the bird. Okay. And then we shoot, flush it up, shoot, and then sometimes the, the pointers will go retrieve also, but not all of them do. Okay. So it's different depending on what kind of hunting you're doing. Waterfowl hunting, that's your duck and your goose. And your upland hunting, they say, that's chucker, pheasant, quail. Not a lot of quail left around here anymore. But right. So you, depending on what hunting you're doing as to what breed you're probably going to go with. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there any breed that can do both? Your labs have gotten into some of your pointing. Um, oh, okay. Yes, they have. We have seen some of your labs that are doing your pointing. And they can do flushing with your quail hunting um, or flushing with your um, pheasant hunting. Okay. You know, when you pheasant hunt, you quarter a field. The people quarter the field and let the dogs go out in front and they'll flush up the birds. And when you say quarter a field? You'll go back and forth through a field and you're going to get those birds up. Is oh, what you're going to flush do. the, mm -hmm. the, the, the mm -hmm. bird. And the, the bird. dogs can be out in front working that and flush those birds up for the hunters to shoot. And labs have been used in that too. So they're pretty versatile. I mean, all the breeds are pretty, pretty versatile. Is to just to think about what you're going to hunt. You know, a lab is more fit, Chesapeake and a golden, they have a coat to go in cold water. Uh -huh. When you're duck and goose hunting, it's cold water. Okay. So you need to think about those conditions. Okay. Okay. Now, do you do you specialize more in one kind than the other? I like to specialize more in the retrievers because I duck and goose hunt. Okay. So we do your goldens and your chessies and, and your labradors. Now, do you actually hunt yourself? Yes. Yes, May I ask how long have you been hunting? I have been hunting now probably 25 25 years. Wow. Were you, did you do this at, as a child at home? You or? know, I, I didn't. My father hunted, but the boys were taken, but the girls were never uh, taken. That's my, how did you, <laughs> just, just, how did you break in? As I just got older and got to working with the labs and uh -huh. I wanted to see the full picture of how that came into being in this hunting scene. How does this work? And uh -huh. so I went hunting and fell in love with it and been hunting ever since. Oh, wow. You know, it's, it's fun to hunt, but then when you have your dog that goes and retrieves your bird and brings it back, that's the icing on the cake. 
Mm -hmm. That's well, fun. Yeah, that, that makes, that, yeah. That, that's a little bit, right. That's, that's fun. And it doesn't have to be, if I go hunting and I get three or four birds, that's fine with me. It's not about the numbers. It's about spending the afternoon or that morning watching that sun come up with your buddy here and going out and getting those birds. It's yeah, and, be, and being outside, yes, too. Yes, absolutely. The sun sets and the sun rises, you see, it's gorgeous. Oh, yes, and particularly here in Kentucky, yes, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful country. Yes. So. And just watching those birds work, you know, you've got your in a blind situation, you've got decoys out in front, you've got your calls where you're going to call them and to see these birds circle and work, it's just, it's really relaxing. It's very enjoyable. And then you've got your, your little friend here to go with you. Uh -huh. So it's, it's, it's good. It's a good thing. What, what kind of things do you need to do to train a dog? Because while the breed is, important. lends itself, it's important, you still have to train that dog. You do, and, and you have to start out with your breeding. You have to start out with the proper breeding. Mm -hmm. That's going to increase your odds that that dog's going to be able to do what you want to do. If the dog has to have major obedience put into it. Um, it's got to have what I call force training. It's got to be taught to fetch on command and deliver in hand. And that's a man-made thing. A lot of labs, a lot of goldens, they like to retrieve, but it's not their idea to come back and sit down beside you and give you that bird. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Their instinct is to take it back to their den. So oh, that part to is their place. To right. their place. So that is man-made. Um, you have to introduce them to the water. You know, teach them how. To, some of them are natural swimmers. Some aren't. Work them through decoys. Work them out of a blind situation. There's a whole lot that goes into this. The gun. You know, you don't take a seven-week-old puppy and shoot over its head. That's scary. That hurt my ears. What was that? They don't understand the relation yet, mm -hmm. as far as the retrieving and all that. So, there's all sorts of parts to this, and it takes quite a while to get it all lined out. How long would it, approximately, would it take you to train uh, a, a, a dog? I can take a, a, a dog as far as gun dog training. I don't like to start till between six and seven months. Okay. As far as formal training. Now, if I can work with the people and give them little tips to do in the meantime to make it easier, that's great. Don't, okay. don't do nothing for six months. Let's work on some things. But if I take one in at six and seven months, in three to four months, I'll have it ready to go hunt that first season on site retrieves. Land, water, dummies, birds, worked out of a blind through decoys. Okay. It takes a lot of patience, doesn't it? It takes a lot of patience. <laughs> a lot of patience. A lot of patience. And you have to teach them all, treat them all as individuals. Okay. Just well, because yeah. the other one did it this way doesn't mean they're all different. And they all move at different paces and you've got to go at their pace. Is, Good advice. Is it better to train the dog yourself or to get one, let's say, that has gone through a training? That session. depends on the person. You know, mm -hmm. some people want to start out with a puppy and they want to go through all that. Some people we have, you know, I'll have somebody call and they're looking for what we call a started dog. And I'll see if I can find them a dog that's already trained. And occasionally, you know, I'll have a dog that's already trained that maybe we're going to sell. Um, so it just depends on that person and their needs and what they want. Mm -hmm. When at once a dog has been trained to hunt, mm -hmm. can it change owners yes. and still hunt? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, so it, it can. can transfer. Yes, and you just show, you know, go through that new person with the same commands that you've trained this dog at and help oh. that transition. But yes, it can be done. So, so there's that. So you maintain that consistency. Yes, so yes. We're just beginning to scratch the surface oh, on gosh, now, but yes. it's time to take a break <laughs> uh, and uh, listen to a happy tale about a sweet little dachshund known as Lucy. And we know you viewers will enjoy this, so give a listen. Lucy is a nine-year-old black and tan dachshund. Lucy is possibly one of the most spoiled animals on the planet. She came to live with Gail and Tom Butler as soon as she was weaned from her mother. Gail and Tom tell her that she won the puppy lottery when she was their pick of the litter. The plan from the beginning was to train Lucy to be a sweet, obedient girl. However, it was Tom and Gail who were trained by Lucy. Lucy does have three tricks. She can sit, stay, and lay down. With the prospect of a treat, Lucy will do all three in order without prompting. Lucy's favorite pastime activities are sleeping, eating, and playing with her toys, which she knows by name. Lucy's tale is certainly a happy tale. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that uh, little happy sweet tale little story. <laughs> about Lucy. Um, this afternoon, we're uh, talking with uh, uh, Sally Moore, who is a local dog trainer here in Paducah, and we're on the topic of hunting dogs hunting today. Dogs. And we've had several requests for this particular show. And Sally, if people have questions after they've seen the show today, uh, 
Can you uh, give them more information? And if so, how can they contact you? Absolutely. Just call me at 270-488-3848, and I'll be glad to help in any way I can. Okay. Your specialized hunting dog information retrieval <laughs> database. That, there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and we certainly appreciate your generous offer to do that, Sally. Oh, no problem. Uh, it, it means a lot, I think, to our viewers to know and, that they get more our information. Viewers, she not only trains them, she hunts with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Exactly. Who's the better shot, you or your husband? I guess that's oh, not a, that's, that's that's not a bad a, question. I, I withdraw that question. <laughs> it's probably my husband. <laughs> I have an awful lot of fun. But you have an awful lot of fun, Derek. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> May I ask, when you do go hunting and you use your own dogs and you, you get uh, ducks or whatever, what do you do with them? We eat them. I cook a lot of duck. Oh. Yeah, we so. eat a lot of duck. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, Or that's, we might have a really pretty duck that we take to a taxidermist and have mounted. Mm -hmm. But we eat what we kill. We don't. Absolutely. No. Yeah, we don't do. Mm -mm. Just go out. Okay. No, we don't. We're not gotcha. about that. We eat what we kill. And I mean, a lot of times Christmas meals, I'll fix a duck. Oh, well, duck is a delicacy. Oh, yeah. It's very good. We eat it a lot. Uh -huh. Yeah. When it, uh, when it talk about hunting, how about turkeys? Is, is that a... I turkey hunt, too. Do you um, do it with a dog? In the fall, you can use a dog to break up the flock the, to flush yeah okay. okay to break them up in the spring no no dogs allowed you just sit and be quiet and wait and call um but the, and wild turkey to me has not been very tasty the way i've prepared it but i'm sure it is the way some people have done it i like the duck better i think oh yeah well well I, duck duck is good anyway mm -hmm. okay Get back to the training part yes. of it sally uh what do you find the most difficult uh thing to teach a dog to be a hunting dog properly Probably, the, I don't know if it's the most difficult, but something that's going to make or break the situation is this force training where you teach the dog to fetch on command, deliver to hand. Mm -hmm. That's where some dogs will fall apart. They can't do it. They can't go through that. Uh -huh. And that's your foundation. You know, if you shoot a duck and the dog goes in the water and gets the bird and brings it back to the bank, lays it down and comes over to you, how are you going to correct that if he hasn't been taught to, to bring it back into you. Mm -hmm. So you have to have it. It's a very important part. Right. But that's probably the hardest thing. And then teaching a dog, um, I would say the next thing would be hand signals, which is sending a dog on a blind retrieve. So he has to go and leave you with nothing being knocked down or, or anything. Right. And you'll blow a whistle, and that dog will turn around and look at you. And you're going to raise your hand, and if you raise it straight up, the dog's going to turn around and go straight back, and you'll tell him back. And then if you want him to go over, you'd move your right hand over and he'd go over. You'd move your left hand over, he'd go over. So he follows the directionality of your hand. Yes, and it's very hard. I call Ooh. it college and dogs. I know people that couldn't do it. <laughs> it's hard, and it's college. And I'll, after the dog has hunted that season and gotten that experience and understands a sight retrieve, and then they're about 15, anywhere from 15 months to two years, then you're going to start that blind retrieve work with some maturity and some experience. But it's hard. It's very, very hard. So in other words, there could be stages of development Absolutely. In, in, in hunting dogs. Yes. Okay. You know, I think you have to be very, very careful not to make this a job too early. Uh, okay, trying to teach them everything yes. the first six months. Yeah, because you'll burn them out. It's just supposed to be fun. You know, some of these oh, people, that's they'll a good say, point. Yeah, it's supposed to be fun. You know, well, I threw him 20 dummies, you know, today, 20 dummies yesterday, 20 dummies. Next thing you know, he's not wanting to retrieve. I said, no, he probably can't stand the thought of looking at that dummy again. <laughs> so you want to throw two or three and leave them wanting more. Make it fun. Uh -huh. Right. You know, I don't get real serious about setting till oh, between five and six months. I'll start setting them a little bit. But I don't get real, real hard on being steady at that early. It becomes a job, and it's not fun. They say, why don't you go get your own bird? So. I, and I know that um, it, it varies, obviously, with dogs, but... Uh, how long approximately, on average, does it take with the dummy training, uh, decoys and things like that, for a dog to kind of get, get the picture, if it, you will? It's going to take, you know, for the obedience and all of it coming together, it's going to take four to, uh, three to four months mm -hmm. to understand and be worked consistently daily, okay, you daily. know, in those situations, yes. Yeah, and that would make it, if I work full, I'm a hunter, but I work full time, mm -hmm. and I want hunting dogs, and I'm going to train them myself, mm -hmm. That would be it's hard. That would be very hard it because hard. I need to kind of do it what five days out of seven or yes, at, do at it least you could do four. You could do four days, but five and five is ideal. You don't have to do all seven days. We need time off too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if a dog's been great, then fine. If not, Saturday school comes into play and they come back out Saturday. 
if I have an issue with something, but um, five days a week or even four days a week, if you consistently did it, it's fine. Uh -huh. That would be fine. And how long, a, when, I, when you say four, how long should the session last? Depends on the dog, depends on the dog's age mainly. Okay. You know, a puppy, one thing at a time, short and sweet, get in, get out, mix like play with it. 20 minutes? 15, 20 minutes, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you're getting into some force training and you're doing your collar conditioning and you're going to do... I might take 30 minutes and I might do 10 or 15 of force training, go do a little yard work with a little heel and sit and stay in here, and then maybe throw them a couple of dummies. So you're doing a lot of different things in that 30 span. Okay, so don't just do one thing. Repetitive. Yeah, with an older dog, you can incorporate the different okay. the different parts of it. Well, yeah. I think the also the important thing to understand is that you can do a lot of this at home in your backyard yes. or wherever. You don't have to go to the field. No, oh no, you need this. to start in a kind of a low keyed situation, not a lot of distractions starting out. Mm -hmm. You can always add distractions in, but you've got to remember these are babies; they're young dogs. Least little thing will get their attention. Well, then we get upset because they're not paying attention. They get in trouble, and the whole thing's negative. Once again, I can't go back positive. This needs to be fun for everybody, not just us, not just the dog. It's about all of us. Mm -hmm. We need to have a good time. It's a partnership you're forming for the rest of their life. And uh, our, our treats are useful, I'm sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Nothing wrong with using treats at all. It seems like to me every good hunter besides a hunting dog needs a very understanding wife also. Or husband. <laughs> or husband, yes. 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 Or husband. You better be careful there. I, I, I should rephrase that. <laughs> understanding spouse to spend this amount of time uh, yes. with an animal, which we, we think is great to spend it, that amount with, a, with an animal. But the more you talk, the more I'm impressed with the patience and consistency that it would take to, to take a puppy and make him a good hunting dog it and does. a good member of the family. It does. And, you know, sometimes I'll tell people, take a video of what you started with because six or eight months down the road, they wonder, why aren't they doing this, this, and this? And I'm like, you remember what you started with? And look how far he's come. We have to kind of, because dogs will go along and then they kind of plateau. They've got to get some maturity. True. And you'll kind of stay, hang there for a while, and then you'll start in your college. So I'll gotcha. say, go back and look at that video. You remember what that puppy was doing at that stage? And look what you've got now. now it's pretty impressive. Qu question, is it common, Sally, for, let's say, pe some people have multiple hunting dogs, um, say one for each type of hunting that they may do. Uh, is it better to have, uh, if you're doing different kinds of huntings, to have a same dog do all of it or have the dog, uh, separate dogs for each of the different things that you, you can might have. Do. You can have separate because you're, a lot of your bird hunters, again, going back to the quail and this type of thing, mm -hmm. you're going to use a bird dog. They're, mm -hmm. they're going to range out there and get out there and go. Your labs are going to stay close. So use your labs for your waterfowl hunting. Use your bird dogs for your quail okay. and chucker and pheasant and that type of thing. And that's fine. You can have two different breeds. Mm -hmm. uh, and then some people will take their labs and waterfowl hunt and do upland pheasant hunting with them. You mm -hmm. can do those two things with a lab also. Okay. So it's just kind of a personal preference. Yeah, but don't expect uh, your one hunting dog to do everything. Everything no, all no, the time. No, yeah, that's, no, uh, they just can't. As we don't excel in everything. They yeah. don't either. They're yeah. going to have their strong suits. Yeah. So just right. remember that. Well, we are getting a, another total education today. Oh, aren't we, though? <laughs> I, I, I'm not a hunter. But, I'm not uh, either, but I'm, boy. I've known people who have had hunting dogs, and I've always wondered just what went on. And, and I know of people that really enjoy it and mm -hmm. their dogs. Yeah, exactly. But we want to take a short break now and listen to a happy tale about a little Siamese cat that <laughs> is a, has a found a new home. His name is Marvin, and I think you'll enjoy this little tale, so give a listen. Marvin is a male Lilac Point Siamese cat that is about eight months old. Robert was at the vet to get some cat food when a lady brought Marvin in to see if she could find him a home. She had found him in our driveway and he had fleas and ringworm. And the lady said she would pay for the medication if Robert would take him home. Robert did and Marvin joined five other cats. He loves warm places and the window ledge in the kitchen. He goes everywhere in the house and is about to get a bell around his neck so he can be found. He's always hungry and will eat constantly if allowed. Thanks to Robert, Laura, and Colin, Marvin now has a forever happy home. All little kittens were as sweet as Marvin is, apparently. And, and as <laughs> lucky as Marvin turned out, at least at the end, mm -hmm. Marvin, Marvin has really found a, a cat-friendly home, well, complete with dogs. He certainly <laughs> has. We, 
Well, this afternoon we're visiting with Sally Moore, and our topic today is hunting dogs. Hunting dogs. And it's been a very interesting uh, topic so far in the first couple of segments. And Sally, uh, again, for our viewers, if they have questions, uh, they're interested in hunting dogs and what kind of dogs they might be interested in and how to do the training, etc. Mm -hmm. how can they contact you? Just call me at 270-488-3848. Okay. I'll be glad to answer any questions and well, help in any way. Well, that's very generous of you. And, and since you're an experienced hunter, you could answer probably most any question that <laughs> well, they would come I, up with. I could come up with some answers for a few, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, Sally, uh, as uh, the hunter and the hunting dog go out in the field, what tips would you give for keeping not only the hunter safe, but the dog safe also? You know, in a hunting situation, um, in a blind situation, you need to control that dog so they don't just jump out when those guns go off because you can actually shoot a dog. So you can okay. have a crate set up right beside your blind with the door on it, or you can take a rope with a little snap on it that you're sitting right there by your dog and you release, but don't let that dog just take off every time the gun goes off because there can be a bad accident. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, yeah, and they have to be taught that. They, they need to be taught that, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. particularly, if there, particularly if there's multiple hunters. Absolutely. You know, some oh, okay. of these blinds are set up for six, eight, ten people. You know, usually my husband, our blind is set up for three people. Mm -hmm. It's not very big. It's, it's, it's low-keyed. Um, so you need to make sure that that dog does not just jump out as soon as that gun goes off. Mm -hmm. There's also neoprene vests that these dogs can wear, too, in the wintertime to help with that warmth. You know, they're sitting out there, hitting that water, doing these swims, burning up calories. Uh -huh. And they get cold, or maybe there's a little skim ice on the water. Well, these vests can help with that and help control, help with that body heat. So that's a good thing as far as safety goes and helping that dog. And you need to obviously increase your food in the wintertime. They're going to be burning more calories again. Up that food. So speaking of that, is, what, is there a particular kind of food or something like that that would be best for a hunting dog? There's a lot of good foods out there now. They've come out with some really good quality food. So, you know, there's, there's a lot out mm -hmm. on the market. Just increase that food. Always give them some breakfast because they're going to be going out there in that cold again. They're going to be, people oh. say, well, he made five retrieves. Mm -hmm. Well, but he went out there and back. I call that 10 retrieves because he's going all the way out there, and some of these retreats may be 100 yards. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's a long run or a long swim, whichever it might be. And it's cold and yeah. cold and then water. I'll, yeah, yeah, and then I'll tell people, put some biscuits in your hunting bag for him to mm -hmm. give him some treats mid-morning. We're kind of dipping into stuff by, about that oh. time, <laughs> so have some stuff for him too, um, and then feed him a good dinner. And sometimes if you see where a dog is losing weight and you know it's seriously doing a lot of hunting, Put about a tablespoon of corn oil. It's very good for fat, on putting fat on a dog. Mm. About a tablespoon of corn oil on his feet in the evening oh, can help with that. On, on their regular food? Yes, and it's corn oil. Corn oil. Not any other, it's corn oil that oh. really helps with that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Not any other kind of oil, just corn oil. Corn oil okay. seems to help with this, the fat, which is what they need. And okay. I, I ask the next question from ignorance since I'm not a hunter, <laughs> but let's say that you have three people in a blind. Mm -hmm. Would it be likely that each one would have their own dog, or would could one dog, excuse me, one dog serve all three? The way we do it, one dog serves all three. Okay. Now sometimes you'll get buddies together and they want to take their own. So you might have one dog on each end, mm -hmm. and you take turns. You know, you just take turns letting your dog retrieve, but you respect that dog, the other dog, while it is retrieving. Would well, you have to confine the other dog? Yes, they would need to be confined in a crate. I mean, we've got a, a deck built on the end of our blind, and we've got a dog box right there. Okay. And our door is off because our dogs know to stay there, but you can have a door to close on it when he's not going to be retrieving and the other one is. So you just take mm -hmm. turns. Or you can make a little line attached to the dog right to the owner that they can control the dog with. All right. So you would recommend that's a safer way. That than, is. Than that is. Until you get a dog, what we call totally steady to shot, where the dog will not bolt when the gun goes off because you don't want to have a horrible accident. And, and that has happened. to be under all circumstances? Yes. Okay. And to get four or five people with four or five dogs, you could get a mess, couldn't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I recommend no more than two. Now, if you've got a field full of hunters and you've got three or four different blinds, but you still need to respect that person over there shooting. Absolutely. So you need to watch your P's and Q's and think about that. Okay. How about ice during the winter time? You know, you need to worry about the depth of the water and you need to worry about the thickness of the ice. If it's just a little skim of ice that they can just easily go through, that's one thing. But if it's hard ice and the water's deep, they fall through, they oh. can accidentally get under the ice. 
So be very careful. They can also get cut by that ice if it's very thick. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So when it's very icy, our dogs don't hunt. We don't, we don't put them on the ice. Okay. Now, if you've got running water where the dogs can just run and they're hitting the bottom, not like swimming water, you're okay because they can't go very far, see? Uh -huh. But if it's very deep, you need to be very, very careful. So you need to know your environment ahead of time. Yes, and a lot of your retrievers, they'll go regardless. They're not thinking about safety. They're thinking about that bird out there. So the hunter has, has, to, has, take. has to think about the Absolutely safety. Absolutely has to be the responsible one because that dog's going to go. Okay. Yeah. What can you do to d help develop their winter coat? Yeah, I would I, think I that would be important. I learned years ago with my first dog, I lived in a two-bedroom townhouse apartment, and she stayed in all the time. Uh -huh. And when I went to hunt her that first season, she did not have a proper coat. And I couldn't figure out why. Well, she stayed in climate-controlled conditions. Mm -hmm. okay. So I learned <laughs> in the fall of the year, start keeping them out some during the day. You can still bring them in at night. Ours always come in at night. But during the fall of the day, if you have a pen or proper place to put them out for a few hours during the day, that weather puts that coat on them and gets them ready to go hunt, gets that heavy undercoat. Which, which brings up the question that you uh, mentioned, uh, that the dog was in all the time and then developed a proper exactly. winter coat. Yeah. Um, I've understood it's better not to try to make a house pet out of a bird dog, that you need to keep them separate. Is, what about that? I don't, I don't agree with that theory. Okay. I mean, our dogs all hunt mm -hmm. and they all stay in the house. Okay. They're part of the family. I compete with, in obedience with them also as well as their hunting angle. Mm -hmm. um, two have been therapy dogs. Wow. I think the, the more you put into them and the more time you spend with them, the more they want to do for you. Mm -hmm. So that's what's worked for, for me over the years. Okay. And what kind of hunting dog is, is uh, your She's baby? a waterfowl. She's a waterfowl. She's a waterfowl. She does the ducks and the geese. Okay, and how old is she? She's four. And how long did it take you to train her? She, that first season we hunted her, she was probably a little over a year and oh. did very well. But it's, it's always continual training on something. I'm always tweaking or doing something oh, okay. with them. You're always doing something. And again, the point you made, you, you don't just get a dog and all of a sudden it becomes a hunting no, dog overnight no. with every skill that you want it to have. Yeah, it takes time. It takes time. Yeah, I see a wagon. She knows we're talking about it. That <laughs> tail is just a wagon over there. Yeah, her, her tail's oh. deadly. <laughs> can clean a tail in a heartbeat. Oh. Well, we're beginning to run a little short on time. And Sally, what one or two items would you like our viewers to especially remember about this about discussion hunting of hunting dogs. dogs today? About the hunting dogs, yes. something yeah. you need to really think about is your breeding. Okay. You want to make sure they come out of dogs that are hunting and have a hunting background right. that's going to increase your odds. Mm -hmm. Healthy dogs. Okay. Make sure there's, a, there's some health works, there's some eyes checked, hips x-rayed, so you end up with a healthy you know, mm -hmm. dog for hunting. Um, so and start with a healthy dog and keep it healthy. Absolutely. Absolutely mm -hmm. stay up on all that stuff because it's important. Okay. Well, Sally, we've gotten a real education today. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> even though we're not hunters, but we, we can certainly appreciate what hunting dogs can do. And we'd like to thank you so much for joining us today and giving us some wonderful tips about how to handle and how to think about hunting dogs. Well, I've enjoyed it. So, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks, there's, a, there's a lot to it. Well, uh, listen, I can... I understand that. There, there have been people in my family who've had hunting dogs and all, but I've never, never understood it to this degree until I have mm -hmm. talked with you. So well, there, thank there you is. so much for sharing yes. your expertise with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And it, we, we thank you for the state of Kentucky, right? <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> well, Darlene, in closing, I'm right. Greg. I'm Darlene. And we'd like our viewers to remember what we say every time. Give your dog a dog, <laughs> your pet, any pet, a little extra love today and, and every, every day. day. See you next time. Happy hunting.